what's up everybody and today we are cracking on with the oversimplified video of the american civil war this is part two if you haven't seen part one go and check it out i'm really enjoying these history lessons basically is what they are with a little bit of comedy thrown in i'm learning a lot about the united states which is great because i'm living here right now in the united states and i'm learning a lot about things that i didn't expect to learn about like even maine like i learned a bit about the state i'm living in right now where it was used as kind of a um a way to they they gained maine as a new state to kind of even out the balance between free and non-free states so i'm learning a lot about things directly involved in the state i'm living in never mind just the whole grand scheme of things of the united states so it's very very interesting and i'm very excited to learn more and the comedy is fantastic i will leave a link down below to the original video go over there give it a like and all that good stuff but i want to start this video with something that i don't usually do which i'm going to start doing a bit more often this video is brought to you by my members um my members support this channel and if it wasn't for them i wouldn't be making videos every single day so members thank you so much if you don't know anything about the members we have three tiers we have recruits guardsmen and officers the guardsmen and officers get put into a private discord that's one of their perks and we have started a gaming clan called original guild we've been playing some halo infinite together in the next couple of days we're going to be playing some battlefield 2042 together which is going to be super hype so get excited for that and it's just all around amazing getting to know you guys so thank you for supporting the channel if you want to become a member there's a link down below there's also a join button down below go and check it out it helps support the channel a bunch and uh, helps me put these videos out every single day so thank you guys i appreciate that without further ado i think it's time to shut up pull this video up and start reacting to the civil war over simplified video, video. Was made possible by honey Stick around to learn how you can honey, save money did, did, when you did, shop did, online. Uh, honey, honey. As the Union struggled to take control... Wait, is that the song? I think it is. Anyway, go on. ...the East continued. Elsewhere, the war raged on. The Confederates attempted an invasion of Kentucky, hoping the state as a whole would join them. But okay. They pushed back. The Indian Territory saw Native American tribes ally with one side or the other in the hopes of securing rights after the war. Which, I'm pretty sure is uh, wasn't that like the start of uh, what's it called skinwalker ranch was used when two tribes were fighting against each other and people bought the land and they used the tribes against each other and there's a curse on the land and then skinwalker ranch happened bit of a tangent but apparently it's true i watched a video on skinwalker ranch go and check it out it's fantastic Along the Mississippi, General Ulysses S. Grant remained one of the few Union generals scoring major victories. With his best pal, General Sherman, by his side, Grant led his armies down the Mississippi to the Confederate stronghold of Vicksburg. Both sides knew that if Vicksburg fell, the Confederacy would be split in two, and yeah. the Confederates prepared for an intense defense of the city. But back in the East, Lincoln still wanted somebody to march south and take Richmond. Have so, one big tactic there is the split in... Um, the south into two which um really helps in two ways right it weakens each side because they now can't communicate but a big thing a big tactic when it comes to these battles is supplies they can't get supplies to the air that's why they put ships all around the coast if they can't get supplies then they're gonna starve themselves to death and that's what they used to do in castle invasions right so they would used to kind of surround castles and stop supplies coming in and out and eventually they have to do something otherwise they'll starve to death um, which i find a super interesting battle tactic which by the way some people in the comments wanted me to play more tactical military games like total war and stuff like that i am looking at the comments let me know down below what tactical military game do you want me to play total war there's like a warhammer version there's a regular version apparently someone was saying there's a mod for the civil war version i'm super interested let me know in the comments what tactical military game you'd like me to play Having given General McClellan the boot, he needed a new man in charge. All right, Mr. President, option one is General Hooker. Bit of a nutcase, but a good general. Option two, his qualifications are his name is Burnside and he has freaking dope ass sideburns. Say I was gonna say, say no more. Look at that, look at that mustache. Say no more. So General Burnside was put in charge of the Army of the Potomac and sent south. Lincoln hoped he finally had a general who could succeed. Burnside met General Lee at the city of Fredericksburg, where he intended to rapidly cross the river and take the city. But the Union War Department was too slow in delivering the pontoon bridges, and the two sides were forced to camp across from each other, close enough to speak. Hey, Yankee, ready to get your butt kicked? Yeah, right, Rebel. God is on our side. No way. God's on our side. Oh, you think so? Well, why don't we ask him? Hey, God, whose side are you on? <laughs> Dude, uncool. 
With over 100,000 men, the Union Army finally launched their massive attack on the 11th of December. But by now, the Confederates had amassed their forces. Wow. During the battle, wave after wave of brave Union men marched headlong into a brutal Confederate onslaught. Even the Confederates couldn't believe what they were seeing. And in one moment of camaraderie, a Confederate sergeant, unable to take it, reportedly came out into the field to tend to the Union wounded. Wow. Seeing this, the Union troops held their fire. Still, Burnside and his forces were soundly defeated at Fredericksburg and forced to retreat. Lincoln's popularity and northern morale continued to plummet. Yep. It's, it's going to happen, right? If you keep sending people's sons and fathers to war and they keep dying, morale's going to drop, right? Especially as the winter heading into 1863 was bad. The winter camps were rife with disease. The food was less than appealing. On both sides, men Ew. began to leave. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm deserting. What? Don't you love your country? Yes, I do. And I'm trying to get back to it as quick as I can. Yeah. <laughs> Lincoln, ever the kind and caring man he was, spent much of his time pardoning deserters' death sentences. Oh Ugh. my. Here's a 17-year-old boy sentenced to be hanged. Well, I'd better suspend his sentence. Or he'll be suspended tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> what? To try to keep the... That's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. The numbers up. Both sides had introduced conscription. There was controversy in the North, however, since rich men could simply pay to have someone else fight on their behalf. Riots broke out in New York City with enraged mobs furious at the idea of going to fight for slaves, an idea that many of them simply did not support. However, mm. after so much pressure, the Union had finally begun allowing black men to enlist. And these men, knowing what they were fighting for, signed up. I bet they did. I bet they were like, you know what? We are definitely helping um, other black people down south. Because holy cow, imagine. By the end of the war, nearly 200,000 troops, 10% of the Union Army, would be black. The valor Amazing. and bravery they showed throughout, silencing critics. Okay, well, that last guy was useless. Let's try this hooker fellow. General Joseph Hooker <laughs> was put in charge of the Army of the Potomac. Look at that chin. And once again, Lincoln ordered him to move south and take Richmond. Hooker met Lee at the Battle of Chancellorsville, where Hooker had over twice the men Lee did. Ooh. Lee was forced to defy all military convention and split his smaller force into two. Lee had absolutely no chance of winning, and Lee won. It what? was his masterpiece. Lee did suffer one significant loss during the battle, though. As his right-hand man, Stonewall Jackson, was riding back to the Confederate lines at night, the nervous Confederate troops, unable to recognize him, no. opened fire. You boys done goofed up. Yeah. Jackson died eight days later. As for Lincoln, he couldn't believe it. It was yet another loss, and Northern support continued to waver. Wow. While the Union kept on struggling in the East, out West, unconditional surrender Grant was making moves as always. In an attempt to take Vicksburg on the Mississippi, he made a series of risky and bold movements. He sent a cavalry raid and feigned Sherman North to confuse the enemy. Then, aided by a fleet of ironclads on the river, wow. he raced his army south to cross the Mississippi. Aware that the terrain to the north was restrictive, instead, he strategically moved northeast, hitting Vicksburg's supply line and defending yep. his rear from Confederate armies in Jackson. Again, disrupting the supply chain, right? Preventing um, supplies from getting to him, making them weaker over time. Time literally is on their side at that point, right? Once he reached Vicksburg, the Confederate defense became hardened, and Grant was forced to settle in for a month-long siege. Wow. During which time, he got rather bored. Despite not taking the city, Lincoln loved it and encouraged Grant to hold firm. It would only be a matter of time before the Mississippi was in Union hands. Yep. Around this time, the people in the west of Virginia, who had remained loyal to the Union throughout, finally broke away to form their own state. They could have named it anything in the world, but the creative <laughs> minds at the time came up with the ingenious West Virginia. Back in Washington, <laughs> Lincoln once again wanted a new general to take command. Oh my goodness, why do all these 19th century generals look so bust? Look, we got Sleepy Eyes Joe here. That's Princess Leia with a mustache. E.T. phoned the doctor. Fine, why don't we give Snapping Turtle McGee here a shot? So General Snapping Turtle McGee was put in charge of the Army of the Potomac. And it was a crucial time for the Union. Because once again, the Confederates decided to go on the attack. Why, why, why would they constantly try and go south there? Why wouldn't they not try different tactics? Because obviously Lee is a... Whether you're on his side or not is a tat is a is a, a military tactical master, right? Let's be honest of what he's been able to achieve so far. Whether you agree with him or not, is pretty damn good at his job. So why don't they try something else? I don't understand why they keep going head first straight into his kind of um, army. Really, it's silly. 
So far, they had done exceedingly well militarily. But as the war kept going, the Confederate economy was crumbling. Yep. Riots broke out in the streets of Richmond as the price of bread skyrocketed. Supplies were dwindling. Jefferson Davis wanted to send men west to rescue Vicksburg, but General Lee knew the longer the war lasted, the worse their chances got. Yeah. And he still hoped if he could just threaten DC, the already demoralized North would surrender. So in June 1863, with the momentum behind him, General Lee once again entered the North, wow. fighting his way through Maryland and into Pennsylvania. General Meade set out to meet him for what would be the most significant battle of the entire war. If the Confederates won, DC could fall. If the Union won, it would be a turning point as the Confederates would run out of steam. Yeah. And the small town that was to get caught up in the crossfire of the largest battle in American history was wow. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. On June 1st, units from each army encountered one another and skirmished through the town itself. The townspeople were forced to take refuge, except for one man who reportedly ran outside for a strange reason. Joseph, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm not gonna let them take my beans. How many times do I have to tell you they're not here for your beans? By the second day, over 100,000 men stretched for miles across the battlefield. Wow. He took the initiative, deciding to hit the enemy's flanks, and he came very close to breaking through the Union's disorganized left. But Union Colonel Joshua Chamberlain ordered a desperate bayonet charge, smashing into the Confederates and forcing them back. The Union... So imagine how desperate you have to get to do a bayonet charge people don't understand this right and you hear stuff like this in the falklands war apparently there was royal marines using um entrenching tools and stuff like that at one point but you have to be so desperate to not only use your bayonets but just attach bayonets if you get the order to attach bayonets that which happened in afghan a few times get the order to attach bayonets you know you know shit's going down so for them to be like, charge. Imagine getting that, guys. Attached bayonets, charge. Like a holy cow. You are at the skin of your teeth at that point. So hats off to them. Forces held across the line. On the final day, Lee believed the Union Army had fortified its flanks, so he decided to finish them off with one massive central assault. The Confederates rushed at the Union lines during General Pickett's charge, and this time, it was the Union's turn to unleash hell. Wow. Lee had correctly guessed Lee's strategy, and the Confederates were decimated, forced to turn and flee. And so this is the first time Lee was, Lee's been outplayed. Devastated General Lee called out to his fleeing and wounded men, telling them it was his fault. And after holding for a counterattack that never came, he ordered a retreat back into Virginia. Wow. The North had just managed to score a massive victory and one they desperately needed. Yeah. And if that wasn't enough, in the West, after a month-long siege, Vicksburg finally fell. Wow. The so, now so this is the North really starting to be like, all right, we're making gains now. And I guess time, apart from that big battle, time has been on their side, really, hasn't it? If the, if the Southern uh, economy is collapsing, time is on their side. Held the Mississippi. And better yet, it was the 4th of July. With control of the Mississippi, Union forces moved into Arkansas and Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee in particular saw heavy fighting, with Union General Rosecrans masterfully pushing Braxton Bragg's Army of the Tennessee out of Tennessee. Wow. He suffered a major setback, however, at the Bloody Battle of Chickamauga and ended up under a Confederate siege at Chattanooga. At one point during the siege, a temporary truce was declared so that wounded men could be recovered. And often in the Civil War, during these small truces, men from both sides would meet in the middle to trade things like tobacco, coffee, and maybe even honey. <laughs> Do you like honey? <laughs> All right, I'm going to skip the ad, guys. Um, leave a link. I'll leave a link down below for the video. Please go and check it out and see the ads and all that stuff. It's important. Oh, yeah. Vicksburg, 4th of July, and the Siege of Chattanooga. Thankfully, General Grant, now in charge of all Western Union armies, showed up and karate kicked Bragg right back into Georgia. Like this. <laughs> Sherman and Hooker, Grant took on Confederate position. Just going back a little bit to that truce, that happens quite a lot in, in wars, unfortunately. Um, not the truce, but, you know, things like this happening where... Um, if you heard the story during World War One, I, I think it was. I don't think it was World War Two. I think it was World War One, where on Christmas time the British and the Germans stopped fighting on Christmas Day, and they had a game of football in Dead Man's Land. If you don't know about that, it's actually a fantastic story. This happens quite a lot, where there is some sort of a a truce, kind of a a, a laying down of arms just for a short period of time that's agreed, and 
at the end of the day, the, the lads that are fighting, they're just lads. So they're going to do stuff like trade stuff and talk to each other. and Because they probably don't have that much in common apart from that one ideology of who they're fighting for, which is pretty damn crazy if you think about it. ...in the mountains around the city, including the famous battle above the clouds and Mission Ridge, Grant continued to be Lincoln's number one guy. With these victories, Lincoln hoped the war was finally turning. Back in Gettysburg, the entire town had been turned into a hospital to care for the scores of wounded men. Throughout the war, on both sides, women such as Clara Barton rose to the occasion, doing crucial work on the home front and volunteering as nurses wow, that's for those awesome. who had given their lives. A new national cemetery was to be established at Gettysburg, and Abraham Lincoln traveled out to attend the opening ceremony. At the event, the main speaker spoke for two hours. Then, Abraham Lincoln was called forward to give some brief, appropriate remarks. In just two minutes, he masterfully and poignantly iterated America's national purpose and the need to continue the fight. The Gettysburg Address would become one of the most famous speeches in American history. While they were now making progress, the North... I want to know the speech. I want to know it. I probably was that what it just said on with the text, but I want to hear it. Like, you know, someone actually say it and read it out. Obviously, no one had recorders back then, so you're not going to really hear it, are you? Still couldn't find a decisive victory in the East. And that was bad news for Lincoln because his presidency was now in its fourth year. In 1864, there was an election coming. Mm. The Confederates knew this too. And with little hope left of being able to threaten the North militarily, they believed their last shot at victory may be <laughs> in the election since Lincoln, <laughs> emancipation, and the war itself weren't exactly popular. People in the North were sick of war and wanted to put it behind them. Robert E. Lee hoped that if he could just hold out and continue to inflict more defeats, the people of the North would vote Lincoln out and replace him with a Southern sympathizer who may be willing to negotiate. Mm. Lincoln knew now he desperately needed a victory. Now, I know what you're thinking, but oversimplified. If Lincoln <laughs> loves General Grant so much, then why doesn't he put him in charge of the campaign in the East? Well, guess what, loyal subscriber? You've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> You're bold, Grant. I'll grant you that. I'm promoting you to general in chief, and I ain't taking you for granted. Now I want hey. you to go to <laughs> Grant me my wish. Please stop. So Grant was put in charge, <laughs> and he came up with a new plan. He wanted to press the Confederates on all fronts, with General Banks to capture Mobile, Alabama, General Sherman moving south to Atlanta, and Grant joining the Army of the Potomac as they advanced through Virginia. So here, what I was saying about we, you, there needs to be a refreshment in tactics. There needs to be some sort of way to disrupt the norm of just heading straight into Richmond um, and facing Lee, which was just failing every single time, which is exactly what Grant seems to be wanting here. In May 1864, that plan went into action. Sherman steadily advanced on Atlanta, facing off against the smaller Confederate army under General Joseph E. Johnston. In addition, a cruel yet highly skilled cavalry general and winner of the funniest Confederate statue <laughs> award, Nathan Bedford Ford. Is that real? Is that real? Forrest was also nearby, doing his best to threaten Sherman's advance. But in a series of battles, Sherman dominated and pushed Johnson back to the city. Wow. But he was held just outside <laughs> of Atlanta itself and was forced to lay siege. Meanwhile, the main show was happening to the east in Virginia. Yep. The Union's top general was finally about to face off against the Confederacies. Lincoln hoped Grant would bring something new to the Eastern Theater and bring something new. He did. As Grant began moving south, Lee still regularly outmaneuvered him and yeah. inflicted heavy casualties, hoping to demoralize the North as much as he could. But here's what set Grant apart from others. He knew Lee was running out of men and that the North by comparison had plenty. Grant would throw his forces at Lee and even when Lee repelled them, Grant, rather than pulling back, would give the order to keep moving forward and flank Lee. Wow. Again and again. In under six weeks, 80,000 men would be killed. Holy cow. 80,000 men. Think about that. That is heartbreaking. In DC, Grant was criticized for being a butcher. At the Battle of the Wilderness, the Union casualties were so heavy that Grant reportedly began to weep. But still, Grant could replace his losses. Lee couldn't. Yeah. And he was being pushed all the way back to Richmond. Lee knew once he got there, he'd be under siege. Yep. Then it would only be a matter of time. Yep. Close to Richmond, Grant again suffered horrific casualties in a miscalculated assault at Cold Harbor. Then, trying to be a tricksty trickster, instead of moving on Richmond directly, Grant moved towards Petersburg to flank the Confederate capital and cut its supply mm. line. But, just like Sherman, Grant was halted outside of the city, and he too was forced to settle in for a siege. Yep. Two identical sieges would not be good enough for Lincoln's re-election. The people of the North saw the casualties Grant had been taking, and they yeah. weren't happy. 
To make matters worse, Lee had sent Jubal Early north to threaten DC with the hope of forcing Grant to wow. withdraw troops from Richmond. Early was repelled on the outskirts of the city, with President Lincoln even attending as an observer, but the North had been given a fright. So with the war currently in a stalemate, who was to be Lincoln's opponent in the critical 1864 election? Wow. Who would the Democrats choose? Guess what, baby? I'm back. <laughs> That's right. Really? General George B. McClellan would really? run for president against Abraham Lincoln. Holy cow. My fellow countrymen, if you elect me, I, the great General George McClellan, will fearlessly and valiantly win the war. Unlike this douchebag, many Democrats, however, including McClellan's running mate, wanted to end the war. So it's possible McClellan may have ended up fearlessly and valiantly making peace with the Confederates, Yikes. which is exactly what they were hoping for. With the war in a stalemate and Lincoln still not popular, it looked like McClellan would win, and the Confederacy may have a chance at surviving after all. Lincoln himself said that without some kind of major victory, it seemed exceedingly probable that this administration will not be re-elected. That's scary, isn't it? Like, during war, it's that close. That close. Like, this, there's been so many incidents, right, during these videos, both in the American Civil War and the American Revolution, where things could be vastly different right now. Vastly different. Just from little things. Little things that just so happen to go one way or the other. It's crazy. Well, fret not, Abe, because if it's a major victory you want, it's a major victory you'll get. Atlanta had been under siege by General Sherman for just over a month. After a number of battles around the city, Sherman sent a force south to sever the city's supply line, yep. and Confederate General Hood was forced to abandon it. Yep. Atlanta, one of the Confederacy's most important cities, had fallen into Union hands. For yep. many, it was clear that the Confederacy's defeat was now inevitable, and the war would soon be over. When the final results came in, Lincoln had won with an electoral college Whoa, landslide, with the that. troops in particular voting overwhelmingly for Lincoln which must have Holy been touching cow. for their commander-in-chief. Hey, man, looks like you lost. No hard feelings? I didn't lose. I merely failed to win. In January, <laughs> Lincoln involved himself heavily in ensuring the 13th Amendment made it through Congress. In a narrow and historic vote, the amendment passed. Amazing. Slavery would now be constitutionally banished throughout Amazing. the nation. Black men and women watching the vote from the galleries knew the work had only just begun. Isn't there like a thing in that that says something about like slavery is abolished or slavery is not okay unless you're imprisoned or something like that? Like there's, there's some sort of loophole that puts people who are in jail right now as people who have to work or something like that. Let me know in the comments. There's something strange about it. I can't remember. A couple months later, at his second inauguration, with victory right around the corner, he didn't celebrate, he didn't gloat. Instead, he emphasized the need for reunification and binding up wounds. To him, Americans, North or South, were to again be compatriots. Yeah. However, listening to Lincoln speak that day uh. was a man who had no interest in reunification. John Wilkes Booth, an actor living in D.C., was also a deep Southern sympathizer. And as the war turned against the Confederacy, depressed and full of hate, he was already plotting his revenge on the man he held responsible. That's really With sad. further Confederate losses, it was pretty clear at this point who would win. But still, Jefferson Davis showed no sign of giving in. The North were frustrated to see the conflict being dragged out. Why waste more lives? In Atlanta, General Sherman believed he had the key to forcing the Confederacy's hand. He had an unusually modern concept that an army could only survive with the support of the people. Yep. Strike at the people and the army collapses. Sherman mm. decided to do something. That's kind of a harsh way to do it, though. That's a very, like, mm, you know, you, 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 you're pushing on difficult times to, do, to start suppressing the people before the army. Unprecedented. He would remove his 62,000 men from their supply line and march through the heartland of the Confederacy, where they would live off the land. There, they would wreak havoc. As they marched, they tore up railroads, wow. burned farms, and destroyed communication lines. They also liberated thousands of slaves. Well, that's one good thing, liberating the slaves. But burning farmlands is pretty harsh. I mean, I don't know. You don't know, do you? Unless you're there. Damage done was estimated at $1.4 billion. Ooh. The tactics were cruel. But to Sherman, it was better than losing yet more men in battle. Yeah, in December, true. he reached Savannah, Georgia. But he wasn't done yet. Next, he turned north to inflict his punishment on the first state to secede, South Carolina. Wow. As he moved, he came ever closer. Sherman's an absolute tank. Hey, you get it? You get it? You get it, guys? General Lee's army still holding out at Petersburg. 
The siege of Petersburg had lasted for 292 days. 60,000 of Lee's men had deserted. Numerous Union attempts to break through had failed. But when the breakthrough finally came, it came quick. On April 2nd, a Union assault finally pushed the Confederates from their defenses. Hey man, there's no need to evacuate, right? You'll rescue us like last time, right? Sorry, can't hear you. Wow. Lee narrowly escaped the city, hoping he'd be able to meet up with General Johnson and continue the fight. Wow. Grant chased him down. Richmond was evacuated, and Jefferson Davis went on the run. As they left, the Confederates set fire to military buildings, but the flames burned out of control. And as Holy Union troops cow. arrived, they became firefighters. So they literally, they're just like, you know what, we're losing, let's just burn everything down. That is terrible. A couple of days later, Abraham Lincoln visited the war-torn city. Grant caught up to Lee at Appomattox Courthouse, where he trapped his forces. It was here, on April 9th, 1865, that Lee saw no point in continuing. Yeah, because he's got nowhere to go. Grant absolutely demolished him, didn't he? Grant completely outplayed him. Completely outplayed. Someone who's supposed to be the one of the best military minds of his generation was completely destroyed by Grant. Completely. Uh, sir, listen, bub. I drank a bit too much last oh, night, geez. and now I'm hanging like a fruit bat on a hot day. So whatever you have to say, I don't want to hear it. Uh, General Lee says he wants to surrender. Hot diggity dog! Grant and Lee met in the home of a nearby farm family, owned by a man who had tried his best to escape the Civil War years earlier. Wow. Wilmer McLean. All right, can we all just hurry up and get this over with? Martha, not now! I'm cleaning! <laughs> Do you hilarious. want us to get rats? Grant and Lee after years of war, now spoke respectfully to one another. When Lee left, his face filled with emotion, Grant's men began to cheer, but Grant ordered them to stop. He knew that now was the time wow. for reconciliation. Just over two weeks later, wow. General Johnson would surrender to- Imagine being a fly in the wall of that house. Can you imagine? I would have loved to have known that conversation. Sherman, ending the war for 89,000 Confederate soldiers in the largest surrender of the war. Wow. Not every Confederate state had surrendered, but the war was as good as over. Across the North, church bells rang out and celebrations erupted. Yeah. In Washington, Lincoln gave a speech from the White House to a jubilant crowd, in which, among various things, he expressed his support for black voting rights. Hell yeah. Lincoln had seen the nation through its deepest crisis. The presidency had visibly aged him. He had lost over 20 pounds. He said sometimes, I think I am the tiredest man on earth. I bet. I'm not sure tiredest is a word, but geez, the man's exhausted. Cut him some slack. On a carriage ride with Mary, Lincoln clearly was looking forward to being a president in a time of peace. He was yeah. apparently very cheerful, surprising his wife, and he told her that between the war and the loss of their son, they'd both been very miserable. Now, it was time to be happy. On the evening of uh... April 14th, Lincoln attended a play with his wife and some friends at Ford's Theater. It was a comedy, and the president appeared to be enjoying it very much. That's in really sad. Bar, John Wilkes Booth swallowed two glasses of brandy. He slipped quietly into the president's booth and awaited for the audience's laughter to rise. Wow. That's crazy. The president was shot in the back of the head. Booth fled the city. Did they Soldiers catch him? carried Lincoln to a boarding house across the street. There, doctors declared there was nothing they could do. Surrounded by his heartbroken wife, son, and members of cabinet, at 7.22 the next morning, President Lincoln passed away. Never before had a president been murdered. A shocked nation mourned as a 12-day funeral procession carried Lincoln back to his home in Springfield, Illinois. On April 26th, Union Cavalry found John Wilkes Booth in a barn in Virginia where he was shot. Yeah. Not long after, Confederate Sheesh. President Jefferson Davis was also tracked down and arrested. Wow. In prison for two years, he was eventually released the North didn't want to put him on trial for fear the jury may rule that Southern secession had in fact been legal. Right. To ensure reconciliation, other Confederate generals and politicians were allowed to re-enter life in the now restored Union. Scattered fighting continued into May when Jeez. the last Confederate forces in Texas disintegrated. The Southern states came under Northern military occupation to prevent any further rebellion and a very difficult era of reconstruction began. Wow. Over three million Americans had fought brother against brother. The Civil War remains the bloodiest conflict in U.S. history, but the Union had been preserved. You could say the real winners were those who were to never again be slaves. Yeah. Further amendments passed by Congress gave black individuals yep. the right to citizenship and to vote. 
significant progress had been made. However, entering into the 20th century, it was clear the fight for equality would yeah. continue. Holy cow. In modern America, the man who fought to preserve the nation and never gave up in the darkest of times stands as a symbol of honesty, empathy, humility, perseverance, and courage. A continuous reminder of what has forged America yeah. and what it should ever strive to be. You could definitely say he was probably the best president. Wow. Kind of emotional. Like, I'm getting kind of emotional. Like, the ultimate winners were the slaves who got this free. They got free. And that's such an emotional thing to think about. What a video. Holy cow. I have so much more respect for this country. Well, I had a lot of respect for the country already, but the history of this country... And Abraham Lincoln, holy cow, now I see why people put him on such a pedestal because he really is. I mean, he probably is the best president of all time, right? The most successful. He literally freed slaves. And although, you know, um, we still have issues with racism in this country, as there are all over the world unfortunately, that we're still trying to fight for, for equal rights, for everything, for everyone. He certainly put this country one step in the right direction, right? And what was such a horrible war had a good meaning behind it and ultimately um, justice and empathy won, which is amazing. It's amazing. It's what a beautiful video, honestly. Um, like and comment down below if you want me to react to more historical videos. Not just oversimplified, but more historical videos. Let me know in the comments down below. I certainly will. Members, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You're, I love you. Couldn't do this without you. Uh, recruits, guardsmen, officers. I love you all. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Especially um, all you guys in the private Discord. You're a ton of fun getting to know. And I'm really excited to play more games. Especially Battlefield 2042. Which I think the beta starts tomorrow. I'm so hyped, guys. I'm so hyped. Um, links down below to all of my socials, including the two different YouTube channels, Original Human Geek, where we play D&D &D and Original Adventures, where if you don't know, me and my wife are converting a US school bus and planning on traveling the whole of the United States. So it would be really cool to react to more historical videos like this and then actually visit them in the bus. I think that would be a ton of fun. I've actually bought a bunch of equipment to do more vlog style videos. So when we do travel the country, I can visit these incredible places where there were some dramatic battles and uh, vlogging my experience of visiting them. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about playing some more tactical military games. I think that would be a ton of fun. But until next time, guys, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.